everyone, now that we're back at school and we're trying to learn how to use the microscopes, we finally finished up assignment one. Thank you very much for that. So now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to try to use bright field, dark field, and phase contrast on a given sample. Of course, when we start up, you want to wear gloves, you want to clean off the eyepieces, what, which I've already done. You want to turn on the microscope, you want to turn on the camera and the computer, you want to load the EOS Utility 2 and make sure that the camera is communicating with the computer, which it is here. Then you want to set up curler illumination by dialing down the field diaphragm to a small size. In order to carry out curler illumination, you have to have a sample on the stage because the sample needs to be in focus to properly set up curler. So I've put a prepared slide on the microscope. I have focused it with the focus knobs. The sample itself is in focus. And then I've turned down the field diaphragm so that I can see all of the edges. I'm going to center the light on the live view screen. And then I'm gonna make the edges sharp with this knob over here, which is the focusing knob for the condenser lens. Now we have the system set up in curler illumination. Hi everyone, now that we're back in class and we've had an opportunity to work with the microscope a little bit and I've done a few tutorials, uh, we finally had a chance to do assignment one. Thank you very much for that. Now, this week I'd like you to um, so we want to center the field diaphragm, the edges of the field diaphragm within the live view window to the best of our ability. Like this, it's pretty good, pretty close. You want to make sure that the, fo the sample is perfectly in focus or the best that you can. This particular sample isn't sharp everywhere, but you pick a spot and make sure that it's sharp and then focus the condenser lens until the edges of the field diaphragm appear sharp. So something like that. Now we can spread open the field diaphragm so that the entire field of view is covered by light and you can see your image. Over here, the control panel for the EOS utility is set up I have it set on Joe's plankton images. Um, this was an old folder, but I'll leave it there. I have it on aperture priority, which it should be. Um, there's no f-stop because we've removed the camera lens. And it looks like with the light setting we have, the shutter speed is one over 800. So that's too fast. We don't need it that fast. So I'm gonna turn down the light until we get to something reasonable, like one over 200 or one over 100. And then of course, we need to um, check the white balance by opening the door, selecting the eyedropper, saying okay, and then moving off of the sample for a second to a region that just is the, the glass slide, and then click double click on the mouse and that will adjust white balance that I turn off the eyedropper and close the window and now I can move my sample back in place and I can refocus and then I can try a shot by pressing the shutter and here's my image so this looks okay I like the 
white balance looks good. The brightness, the exposure that is, looks pretty good here. And that's a decent image. Now, what I'd like you to focus on this week are live samples. I did a plankton tow, and at every desk, there's a, a plastic beaker, a tripor beaker, that's filled with some of the plankton tow. And I'll once again show you how to make a quick slide. We also have some of the protozoans here on each desk, but I also have more over near the sink, so you can go over and take more. And we have a new batch coming this week, either Wednesday or Thursday. I'll uh, send you an email when that arrives. Okay, so on each desk, of course, we have some Windex to clean off the eyepieces. We have a box of prepared slides. We have some hand sanitizers. I'm sorry, hand sanitizer. If you'd like to use some, that's fine. These are microscope slides. These are the cover slips. This is our micrometer if we want to retake images of the micrometer. These three samples are protozoans, and there's some pipettes here. And then finally, this plastic beaker over here has um, plankton in it that I collected this morning. So if we wanna make a slide of our plankton, we need, first of all, a microscope slide. Just one. And we just need one drop of plankton. Now the plankton settles out. It has some weight to it. Um, I stirred it up so it's pretty evenly distributed, evenly distributed at the moment, but I'm still going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to suck off some of this stuff that looks like dirt. And it's not dirt, it's the plankton. And then again, I'm just going to use one drop and put the rest back in the bucket here. And then I'm going to take a microscope cover slip. Try to make sure that I only have one. Yep, there's two stuck together. That's problematic. You don't want two. And then that looks good. And then just set the cover slip on the glass and let it fall onto the sample and that spreads the sample out. So that's it for that part, pretty simple. Now, I'm gonna take off the prepared slide and I'm gonna replace it with the plankton slide by moving this springed lever on the slide holder, slide my sample in place and then release the slide holder until it's fastened to the stage. Now, the first is set for bright field. So I'm gonna look at the image by bright field microscopy first. Looks like I found something. Okay. Here, here's a critter. And try to center this. I'm gonna try to focus it. If I want to zoom in, I just move this square around or I can simply double click on the object and the square moves in place and then it opens up the zoom, zoom view window. And I'm gonna to try to use the fine focus to do my best to focus the sample just somewhere in there. I'm gonna to go to my shutter and see what shutter speed I have. One over 500, that's 
pretty fast. Um, I'll give it a try and see if the photograph comes out okay. Okay, that's our photo. It came, came out okay. Um, if you see a black line across the top, it's because the shutter is too fast and you actually take a photograph of the shutter um, in the, in the uh, image. I'll try, to, I'll try to show you that. Let me move the light, turn the light up, and then I'll do a white balance because every time you move the power button on the light source up or down, you need to recheck the white balance. And then now it says my shutter speed is 1 over 1600, which is super fast. And now you can see there's a line down here, some darkness down here. That's the shutter. You're actually taking a photograph of the door that opens and closes. Maybe I can, I can increase the light even further. Recheck my white balance. Okay. Close that. Now my speed is 1 over 2,500. And here you can see this black line here. So if you ever see this line, you know that your shutter speed is too fast. You're actually imaging the shutter itself. So now what I'm going to do is mouse over the shutter button. And I'm going to turn down the light until I get back to something reasonable. There's one over 200. That's a good shutter speed for this. And then recheck my white balance. Okay. And refocus. I'll, I'll move this up a little bit. The sample's pretty thick, so it's hard to find a perfect spot for the focus. I'll take my photograph. Okay, that's my photograph. I think it's a little dark myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase the exposure compensation. I'm gonna double click here and I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna do two thirds of a stop and see if that's too bright. Yeah, maybe that's too bright. So I'll go back down to plus one third of a stop and we take the photograph. It always seems like one third up gives me the best exposure for these samples. Now I can move the turret counterclockwise to dark field. And now look how beautiful this is with dark field. We didn't even see this, uh, this plankton right here. We just saw the, the big one with the horns on it. Um, to look up what species these all are, which we'll get to. Um, but now I'm going to focus it a tiny bit. Well, it was a five second exposure. So that, uh, it works fine in this particular case because the critter's not moving. So it looks like it's a little too bright to me. So I'm gonna go back to zero on exposure compensation. I'll crank up the light to see if I can get a better exposure. Well, see, it's hard to get a good exposure. This is still a very slow exposure in this particular case but I'm gonna just stick with it since the sample's not moving. So we get a little bit better image here. And if I want to, if I think that's still too bright, I can move down I'll go to minus one, which is one full stop smaller. So that's gonna be half the amount of light, half the, half the exposure and take the photograph again. 
and I, I'm starting to get a pretty nice image here in dark field. Now, the third technique that we've learned about is phase contrast. So if I move this bottom turret below the condenser clockwise, we're back at bright field. And if I move one more, I'm in phase one. And it turns out that the 10X objective, which is the yellow banded objective, works with phase one. It's printed on the microscope objective like we saw in the last lecture, and the dial on the microscope is dialed to pH one for phase one. And you can see now our sample in phase. And I'll take my photograph here. Okay, so that might be a little bit dark now that, because we're at minus one. So I'm going to go back to zero. Uh, our shutter is only 1 30th of a second, which is pretty slow. So I could, if I wanted to, um, increase the ISO. So now I'm at ISO 400, which is, is four times the exposure as it was at 100. And if I mouse over the shutter, now I'm at 1 over 1 25th of a second, which is obviously faster. If I want to check color balance, white balance that is, I have to go back to bright field, and you can see that the color balance is off. So now I open the window, go to the eyedropper, check my white balance, turn the eyedropper off, close the window. Now I can go back to phase one, and this is what my phase um, sample looks like now, and then I can take a photograph um, in phase one. So there we go. What I would like you to do for this week's assignment is to look at live material. And I would like you to have a set of bright field, dark field, and phase contrast with a different sample for each series. So that just photograph the same thing with bright field, dark field, and phase using the 10X objective. Then pick a new species, a new organism, and do bright field, dark field, phase at 20x, another sample at 40x, and finally another sample at 100x. When you use the 100x objective, you need to use oil. And we have oil in the room somewhere. I'll, I'll find it and uh, put it, oh, it's over near the, the spare protozoans on the counter over near the sink. It says Zeiss on it, and you'll see that it, it says oil. So you need to use the oil with that particular sample. Um, let's see if I can open these in Photoshop now. These are, this is image number 12. So if I close live view, and I close my control panel, I can go to Joe's Plankton Images, and I can drag 12, which was my last image, my phase contrast image into Photoshop. That's one image. Then let's see if I go here, I should be able to see my images. Okay, this is the dark field image. I'm going to drag that into Photoshop. Let's see, open image. Okay, there's some issue here with Photoshop, so let me see if I can solve that problem. At any rate, what I would like you to do, again, is live sample, so either the plankton or the protozoans, make your own slide, 
and then we'll end up with a series of bright field, dark field, and phase contrast for the 10x, 20x, 40x, and 100x. So there's four objectives I'd like you to use. You don't have to make one with the 5x objective. Of course, you're welcome to do that if you'd like. Um, but phase contrast doesn't work with the 5x objective. That's why I'm leaving it out. So you'll have four objectives and three final images. So you'll have 12 images altogether. And then I would like you to put the appropriate scale bar on each of those images. So you'll have to either re-photograph the micrometer slide or use the images that you've already taken and look at your notes to determine which image of the micrometer slide goes with the 10, 20, 40, and 100x objectives. Okay, that's it, you guys. Then I'd like you to clean up by closing the computer, turning off the camera and the microscope. Don't forget your card in your camera so that you'll have a copy of your images. Please put any of the glass slides, not the micrometer slide or the prepared slides, that is the prepared slides in the box, but those slides that you made can go in the glass um, trash. So I'll show you what I mean, although I know you all know what I mean. Okay, we said this before that this is biohazard, although we don't have any biohazardous material. This is normal trash and this is glass. So please put everything in the proper location. These are some of the extra protozoan samples. And like I said, I'll have new ones on Wednesday or Thursday of this week. These bottles contain the protoslow. So if they're new, moving too fast, after you put a drop of the protozoans on the slide, put one drop of protoslow on top of the liquid and then place the slide cover onto the slide. And this here is our Zeiss oil for using the 100X objective. Here's extra transfer pipettes. This is Sharp's disposal. And here's extra slides and cover slips if you need any. Okay, that's it for today, you guys. Good luck with today's assignment.